Mr. Snehil Singh, Snehil Kumar Singh, a young IS officer of 2016 batch from Kerala Cadre. Snehal is currently serving as Mission Director, Kerala State IT Mission. Prior to this, he has worked in various assignments, including Sub Collector of Ernakulam and District Development Commissioner of Kunur. His special work includes Maradu demolition as per directions of the Supreme Court, COVID control in Ernakulam via guiding COVID Jagratha, and Corona Safe Network open source software platforms. Snehil is a BTEC in civil engineering from IIT Roorkee and a postgraduate in public administration from Jawaharlal Nehru University. Very warm welcome, Snehil. Uh, uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning, Mr. Krishna uh, and all my uh, fellow participants, uh, seniors, uh, and all the guests who are attending this uh, uh, discussion. Uh, I thank Elix for inviting me and I congratulate Elix for arranging this uh, Atman Bhavara Summit. And uh, as uh, uh, when we are talking about uh, a, such, a, such a broad topic of urban tra of transformation, uh, everything comes down to, as per my understanding, that the next level of transformation will only be driven by technology because that is the only available option with us. Uh, and with the entire gamut of uh, available opportunities that governments and private sector has, I think the, uh, the scale of transformation will be incredible. So with this, I would just like to specify a few of my, uh, you know, understanding on these issues and uh, how I feel that the transformation is going to be driven across the systems. Now, uh, I would want to split up the entire point of transformation into three different elements. One would be the uh, innovation in the sector itself. It could be agri, infra, tech, finance. Those innovations are some a particular element which will be driven by the private sector specifically. Then second element is the uh, innovations and the new transformations happening in the applications which are being developed by the government for the citizen interaction. Now every department has some particular applications which they you know which they are providing services if they are providing any resources if they are providing any inputs or uh, uh, anything so every department would have their own application so there has to be certain innovations in that particular element also the third thing is the uh, the ultimate target of unification of all these applications unification of all these processes so that the processes are well run if they are not operating in silos and the effort and the cost overall for the citizens as well as the government comes down I would uh, want to specifically point out uh, on few things which are very you know crucial which we have realized in the past few years that uh, coming to the second element which I was talking about uh, the application being developed by the concerned department for providing services. Now in Kerala we obviously we have some major partners we have some major players who will be developing these applications for us. Uh, in the government sector we have an IC we have our own in-house uh, uh, software development teams who are doing that. Uh, over and above this, in the past five to six years, we have very actively engaged startup companies located in Kerala to build those systems. So in the last one year itself, we have around 60 to 70 startup companies developing products, developing applications, uh, some tools for the departments to be used in a particular uh, domain. Now, what it does is it, it, it creates a lot of businesses within the startups, within the local guys, our companies for the government and both of them are equally benefiting out of it. Now, if I, I'm sure like all the, uh, all people would agree to me that the government systems in itself are very not, are not very complicated. They're very simple system. It is just that how you implement it, the better implementation it happens, the better uh, result it uh, will um, bring out to. When the systems are not very complex, it gives a lot of opportunities for the startup companies, for uh, you know our developers, our tech uh, uh, innovators, to bring up new solutions using new technologies, using AI, blockchain, ML, uh, to you know create something new. And I feel that I can be proud of this fact that in Kerala we have been trying to do this as much as possible and with a very uh, you know highly active uh, startup and government interaction. We have able to get a lot of interesting products coming out of it. At the same time, when we're talking about startups developing products for, you know, the governments, we also have to see that uh, who manages those, uh, those applications. And which brings me to the second point in this particular element that uh, the major challenge for any government or for any organization, I feel in the future would be to uh, have trained people to manage these systems, to manage these operations. 
so i think that we have to gradually build up our skills build up our capacities and capabilities so as to operate and run these systems now we are i'm not specifically talking about software developers or system admins or database admins not just them but general understanding of how tech systems are evolving now coming to the first element which i was talking about in the sense of innovation in agri infra and technology these are uh, you know these are creative inputs which only a corporate structure or a private individual can develop because they have an incentive to do that generally speaking uh, governments do not have an incentive to innovate too much uh, beyond what is in the mandate because we are into the service delivery into the public service delivery but the new technology development is a very different field it has a lot of different elements now, but at the same time governments has provided conducive environment and i can give you a very clear example that uh, in kannur district of kerala there is a university professor who has uh, sat down with four students and tried to develop a smart agri sensing uh, sensing system Uh, which is iot link and is providing great analysis great uh, data points for the farmers and the information is being uh, properly maintained and uh, uh, shared with all the stakeholders now that project has now been uh, is now in the process of being picking up with by the agriculture department themselves and uh, for a state wide rollout and trials pilot has already been done but we want to scale it up further now when when that once that happens we need to see that certain uh, these kind of innovations have to be allowed in every sector in terms of very basic pro- project management very uh, in terms of civil engineering in terms of construction in terms of data sharing in terms of iot in terms of 5g deployment which is going to be the next major challenge and the next major opportunity for everyone for the governments as well as private sectors uh, including uh, these in conducive environments have to be created so that you know it it it, it brings everyone together because the problems are identified now but at the same time there are certain problems which were still to be solved we have not been able to solve certain very basic problems of data sharing in terms of privacy there are certain certain confusion which we have to solve resolve uh, and we have the tools now it is just that how we how smartly we can start implementing it and how start, smartly we can uh, modify our systems to pick up that uh, coming to the core elements of uh, i think transformation for citizen centric services i feel that three major uh, initiatives of our government uh, has been, uh, our government of india generally has been aadhar digi locker and upi and these three i feel are such important tools which can completely transform how uh, citizen service delivery is uh, is considered is taken up and how that is being managed i'll give you an example on what we are trying to do in kerala uh, with the unified registry is that using aadhar as a reference key because aadhar number has its own uh, issue so we want to unify the databases of all the different departments clean the data and create a database which is a uh, le- clean legitimate logical and can be shared with concerned department as and when the information uh, is uh, as and when the information is required now it it opens up a lot of opportunity because it opens up opportunity for data analytics in simple social science sense that how many if you take an example that how many uh, women led households are not taking rations or they are not taking certain pensions in which area so it opens a huge opportunity for data analysis and uh, in terms of predictive analysis also it opens up a lot of gates but i do want to be conservative in the sense that we do not have to jump into predictive analysis and uh, you know uh, data analysis I- immediately it has to be a demand driven uh, initiative now kerala has been suffering from floods in past 2 3 years and it, uh, every year there are certain pockets of land which gets affected by other floods or landslide we need to have a at least a database in our back end so that we can support those people we can support those departments and give them the correct information as and when required and obviously there will be some insights which will be coming in terms of when 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 ai is also bit, uh, brought into that how the changes are happening if there are any geographical changes because the state disaster management authority will also be looking into the same thing ddma will be also looking at the same thing, uh, uh, same things and at the national level also they are also looking at the same data uh, a, a simple uh, initiative that government of kerala is also trying to do is a open spatial platform so all the spatial data will be shared in one platform and will be available for everyone to use obviously there has to be some verification mechanisms and uh, checks and balances how do we ensure that the data is correct uh, and it, it, it we are moving towards spatial planning itself now these small small tech initiatives are something which will help the department which will help the government to create better policies create better rules and to implement them better uh, 
over the time i have realized that uh, acceptance of it systems have been very very easy now it has not it is not considered to be something which is uh, there will be nobody no citizen who will be saying that we don't want some new uh, advanced system in this for example ration digital ration is now completely digital, uh, digitalized land records are being uh, are in the process of being digitized nobody is going to say that it is not correct because ultimately everyone understands there is an acceptance in general about how technology can bring transparency and accountability with the entire system and obviously the efficiency has increased drastically over uh, if if we want to have some baseline analysis i'm sure there will be at least 10 times more efficiency in terms of clearing the uh, applications in terms of monitoring how these applications are being cleared where is, where is it being stuck and uh, we also are trying to consolidate all these things together in one place unified registry is one particular example then we are also working on uh, integration of all the services which are being provided by the uh, by the government to citizens in respect of the department so we have been able to list out around 800 to 900 different services bring them to a common platform and then uh, you know clean the application process itself why do they require 10 different applications uh, 10 different documents why can't it be done five digi locker integration is being pushed for every particular department application so that they don't have the citizen don't have to bother with uploading documents again and again there should be an automatic verification system so uh, there have been a lot of uh, interesting developments in terms of integration of all these services which are being taken up and uh, i i i feel that it 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 has to be only improved but there has to be an oversight in terms of entire development because uh, we have felt that across the years development of applications have happened in silos the systems are not talking to each other the the data sharing is not happening and we definitely need a system and uh, we are in the process of designing a system where every department will have the flexibility of um, making their own systems making their own applications but also having some uniform principles uh, in line with the entire state entire uh, government it will help in the consolidation of the data it will help in the sharing of data and as i mentioned earlier it will save lots lot of cost in terms of money as well as time so uh, nothing major else from my side i would uh, thank um, uh, mr krishna for inviting me and all uh, the participants in this uh, bharat summit and uh, thank you thank you uh, mr snehil kumar singh for sharing your perspective